This is the moment. This is the turning point in your life, in history. It is staring you in the face. Do you shy away? Do you ignore it and bow down and hope that if I keep my head down, they won't come for me? Because I'll tell you this, that's wrong. Now is that moment. We are watching the face of authoritarianism rise in the U.S. Joe Biden's administration is in discussions about mandating vaccines for interstate travel. We see now, I think, four cities mandating vaccines, a proof of vaccination to go into bars and cafes and restaurants, not too dissimilar to what we see in France. In Australia, the military has been deployed to enforce lockdown and they're calling in more troops. It is happening right in front of you. What will history say about what you did when this is happening? Now, what do I mean by this? Because a lot of people are like, Tim, what do you mean when you say stand up, fight back? Uh, figurative activist kind of phrase. I don't mean physically fight. I mean, the, the, the Democrats power is not absolute. Certainly, you have establishment Republicans who are getting on board with all of this stuff, too, which is part of the problem. We have a Supreme Court ruling, Amy, uh, it's not Supreme Court, but Amy Coney Barrett rejected an emergency uh, request for a stay on mandatory vaccines in Indiana. So I don't think the Republicans are going to get you out of this one. But I think there's an opportunity in 2022 for uh, an electoral system, which would strip many of these Democrats of their ability to do what they're doing. And I think that's why they're moving so quickly and why it's so shocking. Normally, the despots, they want to slow boil, right? Put the frogs in a pot, crank the heat up so that it slowly boils and you don't realize what's happening around you. But they're, they're, they're rushing this to an extreme degree. And I think it's because they know that come 2022, they might actually lose the House and then Joe Biden could face impeachment if the Republicans that come in are like America, uh, American populist type individuals, like America first populists. They are going to come in and they're going to be like, we're not doing any of this. And that can really stifle their plans because the Democrats have such a thin hold on power right now. They are moving rapidly. There's a video going viral right now. It shows some men arguing and there's like a white dude on the phone. And then someone walks up, a black dude, and punches him in the face and just knocks him out. Now, I don't know what the context of the video is. And I think, you know, people sharing this stuff, they're, uh, you don't know the context, right? People are arguing with each other. People fight all the time. I don't think race is a component. But many people are using that to say, get out of cities. Look, uh, and I see that stuff and I'm like, that is not, in my opinion, the reason to get out of cities. Street fights happen all the time. Innocent people get punched all the time. I mean, well, to be, to be fair, it is a reason to get out of cities. I should say that. But as if it's a new thing, people are acting like they're surprised by this. No, it's just you're seeing the video on the internet. The reality is that these cities have become despotic, that the police are willing to enforce anything. They would punch their own mothers in the face if their mayors told them to do it. They literally would. OK, OK, not literally. I am exaggerating because, you know, they wouldn't punch their own mother in the face. I'm just saying if, if these cops get orders to do something egregious, they will do it. They've been doing it. They did it last year. Now, to be fair, NYPD was refusing to enforce a lot of this mandate stuff. So they had to call in troopers and out of, uh, you know, and, and, and other uh, police departments. So perhaps local cops in certain cities won't do it. But there's, there's always more than enough cops in a neighboring town who will come into your town and enforce the law against you. And I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. Inter this, is a story. this is a story from WKYC Studios. President Biden eyes tougher vaccine rules without provoking backlash. No, you're provoking a backlash. I want to tell you about a story we covered yesterday you may have heard. And I'll give you the gist. And I'll, give it, I'll keep it really simple. Inflation is hitting really hard. And a local journalist reached out to a small family restaurant and asked them if they were being hit by inflation. The restaurant said, oh, yeah, man, the prices are skyrocketing. Uh, you know, I, I got to pay 200 bucks more a week in mayonnaise. Local GOP posted that and called it Biden inflation. And Democrat media started calling the restaurant liars, mocking them, saying you can't use that much mayonnaise. You're stupid. And, and now they're actually going after the business, leaving them bad reviews and threatening them. I mean, threatening their business, not like them physically. I don't know if that's actually the case, but I know they're going after their business, leaving bad reviews and things like that. These people didn't do anything. I'll tell you what they did. They mentioned a truth. And this is what you need to understand. This small business, they, they, they are not political. I've, I've spoken with them. I called them, talked to the owner. Not political. Told the truth to the journalist. This is what our prices are like. So they came for them. 
So they're trying to destroy their business. The m- mainstream Democrat establishment media are insulting them, calling them liars, sending hate and harassment their way for daring to speak up and tell people a simple fact. Inflation is here. It's funny because these people don't understand despotism, authoritarianism. And because of that, you have cowards who are saying, I don't want to be involved in politics. Well, this is what happens when you when you back away. They're going to keep increasing these mandates. They say when it comes to interstate travel, well, it could be unpopular and and too polarizing. So they're not sure they're, they're going to do it. But they say that's not to say they won't be implemented in the future as public opinion continues to shift towards requiring vaccinations as a means to restore normalcy. That is vac- mandatory vaccines for interstate travel. I am telling you, I was not wrong about this. I, I was not wrong about the activists coming for you because you dare speak up. Imagine what the future will be like, what the message being sent to this restaurant is, what this message says. They are beating you figuratively over the head over and over again and saying, shut up. And you know, it's funny. It reminds me of that. Uh, uh, ooh, let's do a Marvel reference because I know the left loves those. When Loki in the Avengers tells everyone to kneel before him and the man stands up and, and, and Loki's like, you better kneel or else. And he says, I will not kneel for you. I, he, said, he said, I won't kneel before a man like you. And then he says, there is no men like me. And he goes, there are always men like you. That's the moment we're witnessing right now. Will you drop to your knees and say, yes, yes, may I have another? Please tell me what I can and can't do. Or will you stand up and say no? Here's what happens. These people who are attacking the restaurant, they're useful idiots They're like brown shirts, just like Antifa. They're too stupid to know what's going on. And so they become the cudgel for the authoritarians to beat down anyone who opposes their narrative. That's what the media has been doing. Innocent, regular working class people. Well, I tell you what, man, I will have very little sympathy for many of these people. Look, I empathize. I do. I sympathize with this business. But I tell you, if you think you get to back away and pass the responsibility onto somebody else, don't be surprised when no one is there to speak up for you. This is what's happening now in this country. They say, while more severe measures such as mandating vaccines for interstate travel or changing how the federal government reimburses treatment for those who are unvaccinated and become ill have been discussed, the administration worried that they would be too polarizing for the moment. That's not to say they won't be implemented in the future as public opinion continues to shift. And is public opinion really shifting or are they just going to say it is and then slow boil until they enact border checkpoints at states? I tell you, I live on the border. Uh, I live in West Virginia. We work on the border of uh, the, the three states. It's West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland. There's one bridge. If they put up a checkpoint to, to track people coming in and out of the state, it would take you about an hour to cross into the other state. And you know what? I don't know what you do at that point especially for the people who live and work between states, which is fairly normal in border cities and and border uh, areas. What will that mean? It will cause the states to self-isolate by simple nature of pressure on the system. Somebody who lives in West Virginia is going to be like, well, you know, it's a it's it's normally only a 10 minute drive for me to go to Walmart. But because of that checkpoint, it's going to take two hours. I might as well go to the one that's 20 minutes away in in, in my in, in this state. So it just cuts off the interstate economics. They say Lawrence Gostin, a professor of health and law at Georgetown University, said Biden would likely need to continue to turn up the pressure on the unvaccinated. He's really going to have to use all the leverage the federal government has and indeed use pressure points. And I think there are a few that he can do, but he hasn't done yet. The country is completely fatigued with lockdowns, business closures and masking. And vaccines are literally our only tool. We tried masking, distancing, occupancy limits, even entire lockdowns now for coming along nearly two years. And the virus just keeps raging back. And the vaccines are the only thing we have now to defeat the virus. We need to use that tool and we need to use it vigorously. And I think there will be large public support for that. You are wrong, sir, because polling shows that there's about half the country that are absolutely adamant and will refuse to get vaccinated. It's a little bit less. I think actually, I think it might be closer to a third to a half. So, you know, around like, you know, 35 to 40%. And for whatever their reason is, I don't know. I'm not their doctor. I think one of the big problems we have now is, while I certainly think it's fair to say, we just had, you know, Kyle Becker on the show the other night. He is far from a leftist. 
He got the vaccine. He's fine. He said, you know, he had some, he had some, uh, he got zonked out for a little bit, felt fatigued. We've had tons of people come in. I think it's fine. I, but, but I ultimately think I, I'm not here to give anybody advice. I can sit here and be like 330 million doses administered. You got to talk to a doctor. And I think one of the reasons many people may not be getting the vaccine, there's two things. A lot of people got one dose and then stopped. So they're not fully vaccinated. And that's, that plays, that, that plays a role in where we go into San Francisco, right? Because you need full vaccination. There are people who got one dose of the vaccine, had an adverse reaction, and were advised by their doctor to stop. This is common. The CDC says this on the CDC website. It says if you have an adverse reaction, make sure you talk to your doctor, and your doctor may recommend you not follow up or you try a different vaccine, maybe Johnson and Johnson. This is why I don't give medical advice and I say talk to a doctor because that happens. That's why we have more people with one dose than people fully vaccinated. It's also entirely possible we have people with no doses because they have other ailments or underlying conditions. If they implement, the, look, look at this, CNN from CNN, first major U.S. city announces it will mandate proof of full vaccinations for certain indoor activities. San Francisco became the first major city to mandate proof of full vaccines. City residents age 12 and older will now be required to show proof they have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to enter restaurants, bars, gyms, and theaters as well as large event spaces with at least 1,000 people. The new mandate is scheduled to go into effect August 20th. We know that for our city to bounce back from the pandemic and thrive, we need to use the best method we have to fight COVID-19, and that's vaccines. Many San Francisco businesses are already leading the way by requiring proof of vaccination for their customers because they care about the health of their employees, their customers, and the city. I certainly think if you go to your doctor, and you're an average person, they're going to recommend a vaccine and you're going to be completely fine. But I don't know your history. I don't know what you read. And I don't know what your doctor said to you. So I think that's between you and, and, and them. And therefore, I will not mandate you to show your papers to me. This is the craziest thing. There was, uh, um, I can't remember who it was. Uh, I, we, we know the story of Pete Parada, who was formerly of The Offspring, their drummer. And he said that he has uh, Guillain Barre syndrome, which is a, it's nerve damage caused by, I, I think it was childhood vaccination. It happens to people. It is a known side effect. And he said, for this, his doctor recommended against him getting the vaccine. For that, he got kicked out of the band. That's insane to me. But what's more insane is that there was some other person, I can't remember who, who posted a message, some celebrity saying, you know, please don't do this. Please don't mandate this stuff. Uh, uh, you know, some people are unable to get the vaccines. And I realized the scariest thing about this, if you show up to a place and say that you're exempt, they're going to say, why? If you say, more importantly, outside of that, if you say that you did not get the vaccine, people are going to question you. And that's going to mean that many people in, in fear of not being socially accepted will have to reveal underlying health conditions that normally would be private. There are many conditions, maybe it's simple as allergies, Maybe it's as simple as uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. For that, uh, people are recommended against you know, getting the vaccine. There's also a potential that there was some embarrassing side effect of the first dose and your doctor recommended against it. And now someone wants to tell, come to you and say, why, why, aren't, why aren't you getting it? So there's uh, Libby Emmons, we've had on the show several times. She posted that she, uh, on Twitter, she opposes vaccine mandates. She is vaccinated. And on Reddit, they called her an anti-vaxxer, which is insane. She literally got the vaccine. So what I'm saying is there could be someone who goes to the doctor who really wants to get the vaccine. And the doctor says, I will not recommend this. There, there was, uh, uh, interestingly, there was one story about Hannity we talked about where the guy went to his doctor and he said he has a cancer survivor and was scared because there's, there's um, counterindications for people who have survived, survived cancer. And the doctor said, well, I recommend you get the vaccine because you're immunocompromised. So he said to the doctor, is this something you will administer and prescribe? And the doctor said no. And for that, the guy said he's worried about his underlying condition. Should he then have to go public and tell everybody that he's a cancer survivor? Man, I don't want people to be forced to reveal they've got some kind of illness or disease or something. You know, I mean, look, I guess if it's contagious, then we need to be like, like with COVID, hey, we'll tell people, don't go out and spread COVID. If you're sick, stay home. Let's have some reasonable measures to, to stop the spread of this disease. But even Fauci is now coming out and saying that it looks like this is going to be a yearly thing. They've been saying it for some time, meaning boosters every year. Is this the first time in history that we've had the entire world be just crippled by, a, by an illness? 
Now, I mean, I understand the, the black plague and very serious illnesses with extremely high mortality rates and things like smallpox. But while this is, you know, COVID is going to be, uh, if it becomes a yearly thing, it'll be like twice as bad as the flu. Like the, the mortality rate is, 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 is a lot higher. It's not 20%. It's not 40, 50, 60 percent. So the protocol seems to be that we have to learn to live with this, take reasonable precautions. I'm all for the mask thing, right? If you are sick and you know you're sick, put on a mask or stay home. So when I see people out with masks, I'm like, I don't know or care. I literally don't. When I see uh, buildings with mask mandates, if I have the option, I'll go somewhere else. Otherwise, honestly, I don't care all that much. Mandating children wear masks arbitrarily, I think is a problem. Mandating people wear them arbitrarily may, is, is, is ridiculous. But we do, I think, should, we should have a culture of people wearing masks when they're sick because they do that in Asia and it literally does help stop, uh, s- slow the spread of anything. I don't want to get sick. I get really, really mad when people come here, people who work here and they're like, man, I'm feeling a little sick. I'm like, go home. I work every single day without exception. I do not want to get sick because I have been sick. Of course, you know, uh, once or twice in the past uh, year or so, and I work through it. You get a headache, you pop some ibuprofen, and you work through it. I don't want to get sick. So people should wash their hands more and wear their masks and things like that when they are sick. But mandating this stuff like San Francisco is doing, now New Orleans, check this out. New Orleans will require proof of COVID-19 vaccination or negative tests for bars, gyms, concerts. It is happening now, my friends. I wonder, though. Will Americans reject this, resist this, and uh, what will this lead to? I tell you, it's a slow motion controlled demolition. That's what, well, Zuby called it, a, a, you know, Zuby, he called it a controlled demolition in a comment on Instagram on, on one of my posts. This is the only way to explain it. There are people who aren't going to get the vaccine. You, you cannot mandate someone to defy their doctor. It's that simple. If, if they put up checkpoints saying in order for interstate travel, you need a vaccine, and then there's somebody who's like, my doctor said no. Then what are you supposed to do to, to cross the state line? The mere mention of that should be ringing alarm bells because they are boiling us in the pot. They said last year, that's not, they're not going to have ma- passports. You're crazy. It's no, that's ridiculous. And now here we are. Next year, they're going to be like, well, you know, to, sl- to stop the spread, you know, why should blue Maryland suffer because red, wet, red West Virginia isn't taking it seriously? So we got to put up those checkpoints. They already had checkpoints last year between New York and Connecticut. They were checking people's uh, license plates. It will happen. OK, I shouldn't say it like that. They are pushing. They are pushing it. And it might not happen if enough people say no. As that article said, when public opinion changes, they might start doing it. I'll tell you what will happen. If they implement these border checkpoints, if they if they do more of these uh, uh, city lockdowns and mandatory vaccines, the economy will be crippled. Joe Biden shuts down the Keystone Pipeline, bans fracking on federal land, and then opens up you know Russia with no sanctions. Says, "Go ahead, do the Nord Stream too." Our economy is being just slammed over and over again with a sledgehammer. These city lockdowns, you know what they're going to mean no tourism, truckers not going to come in. Fascinating. The country will be bifurcated. Well, the good news, I guess, is if they, if, if they get the country to 70 percent vaccination, they're not going to care about the 30 percent because they'll have their 70 percent to maintain the uh, uh, economy to a certain degree. But I tell you this. I mentioned Libby. She's the editor in chief of the Post Millennial. She's vaccinated, but she doesn't agree with these mandatory vaccinations. Still, that creates kind of a hybrid situation where she's less likely to uh, work and, and live in a city with these mandates because she opposes them. But she still can freely move about in cities that require this. Imagine you live just outside of New Orleans. Yeah, now you can't go shopping there. Imagine you live in the Bay Area. Can't go to San Francisco. Not unless you adhere to their requirements. As they said, they want to turn the pressure up. Eventually, we get to that point where, like I said, truck drivers won't go into these states. We already have a shortage of truckers. Gas prices are skyrocketing. I hope you recognize what's happening because I'll tell you this. As I often say, Tell me what reason you have to believe that things will calm down. I'm, I'm all ears. Comment below. Tell me what reason you have to believe that this is the apex, that it's the, the climax, the peak. It's now going to start calming down. They're going to start removing these lockdowns, these restrictions. No, they're increasing them. It's getting worse. And now they're talking about some very seriously extreme border lockdowns. I don't know how they mandate that. How do they enforce that? I guess it only takes one cop 
at every, you know, uh, uh, highway that comes into and out of the state. So what will you do? I guess sneak across state lines. Wow. Imagine the future we are heading towards, my friends. More and more CEOs are coming out and mandating it for all of their employees. And now some people have, you know, I've talked about this before. I'm fine with small businesses having more leeway on who and who they hire and don't hire. But I'm less inclined to, to respect that when it comes to major corporations because it leads to fascism. But here we are. You've got the establishment leftists. I, I think it's funny. The meme is uh, 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 an alarming amount of people who are saying punch a Nazi have flipped and are now saying, show us your papers. Isn't that amazing? But that's where we're going. I think if they implement the interstate uh, lockdown thing, this country will instantly just shatter. Instantly. Because you're going to have broken supply lines. Texas will then start saying things like we can't rely on food to come in from other places because many of these people aren't coming here. But I'll tell you what's interesting. It's a valve. It flows one way. If Texas and Florida are open for business, that means you can go from California to Texas. And then if you're a vaccinated truck driver from California, you can go to Texas and then come back. If you're from Texas, you can't go to California, which means goods will transfer into red states, but not out of them. Very, very interesting. Unless, of course, it's just, you know, the trucker from California who comes in is the one who transports stuff back. So that's fair. But it means that these states will increasingly be isolated, that people who live in these states will remain in these states and not be traveling outside of them for the most part. It will dramatically reduce interstate travel. And then eventually it will create cultures unique to, you know, for a long time we had the regional cultures. The words, you know, like pop and soda and Coke mean all different things across the country. You've got water fountain bubbler. You know what a bubbler is? I guess people in Cape Cod call water fountains bubblers. How about that? Well, that's all going away because of the Internet. But what happens when you have people in Kentucky who can't leave Kentucky? Then you get a unique Kentucky culture. They grow their own foods. They, they make their own recipes. They might share them online, but people in other states can't get access to the same crops. So we don't know exactly how it will play out, but I can tell you this. I think it will lead to just collapse. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.